Frontier recently announced a significant balance pass intended to address the long grind normally required for engineering. This was a generally welcome enhancement of the game, but does leave some other issues with the engineering system largely unaddressed. This video will review the changes they've made, highlight the specific effects to gameplay that are expected, and look at some issues that were left unresolved. The first and most significant change to the engineering system is the volume of materials recovered per event. This means that the number of materials found at specific points of interest, signal sources, and in mission rewards are being greatly increased. Under the old system, typical payouts ranged from 3 to 6 materials per interaction, with some rare events yielding around 10. The new adjusted payouts will range between 30 and 100 materials depending on event, location, and difficulty. Specific mention was made about fixed farming locations, like the Jameson crash site, receiving additional scannable beacons, though no mention was made about the number of micro-resources received per scan. It should be noted that statements like these are being made by community managers who are separated from the developers by a layer of abstraction, so the exact changes are likely to be different in detail, but not in spirit. This change will directly affect the collection times for manufactured and data materials, but we are not given any specific details about raw materials. The vast majority of these items are recovered from random procedural interactions and not from fixed locations. I would expect that raw materials remain the most labor-intensive to recover, with generally minimal changes to effort. Increasing the materials payout per event reduces the value of individual engineering modules, making them easier to discard when needed. It also encourages more experimentation on the part of players, as additional materials mean less hard commitment to a specific build and a more forgiving materials ecosystem. Generally speaking, this change is low effort and high return. It probably did not require a lot of dev time to implement, and will have excellent positive emphasis on the community morale going forward. Another welcome change to the engineering system is the removal of randomized blueprint progression. Beginning with the Type 8 update, all engineering blueprints will progress in fixed intervals each time that a blueprint is upgraded. This means the exact amount of material required to advance an engineering blueprint to its maximum grade level is now fully predictable. Where before, players were forced to collect material against a maximum statistical average that made each roll less productive the closer a blueprint advanced to the max grade 5. The first time a player works with an engineer to unlock advanced blueprints, more rolls are required per blueprint level to advance. After that, players get full efficiency with that engineer forever. This is another welcome change that allows players to effectively set goals and achieve them on predictable metrics. This reduces the amount of RNG that players have to engage with and is a welcome trend that I greatly appreciate. Some engineers have also been made more accessible through the reduction of their unlock requirements. Not all engineers are receiving a change, but several access missions that require collecting materials are having the number of materials reduced. Wellington Beck will now accept cat media, classic entertainment, or multimedia entertainment and will require 15 in total. Kit Fowler's opinion poll requirement has been reduced from 10 units to 5. Hero Ferrari's settlement defense plan requirements have been reduced from 15 units to 5. Yard and Bond's smear campaign plans have been reduced from 8 units to 5. I stalled out on Odyssey Engineering trying to find opinion polls, so this change has particular relevance to me. 
Odyssey's engineering system still needs work to reach its full potential, but this is progress in the right direction. Odyssey suit engineering blueprints are being adjusted to reduce the overall materials requirements across the full spectrum of progression. This was an issue I addressed specifically in the Odyssey review a few years back, and constituted the greatest source of frustration that I had with the system overall. In addition to long engineer unlock times, collecting a massive trove of ingredients that were often dependent on random generation was impractical to the extreme. Some of the most difficult items to acquire were power regulators that upgrade a suit, and several of the data samples required to add engineering effects to an already upgraded suit. The base Odyssey suits are receiving a buff to their carrying capacity, intended to help players get farther away from parked ships and SRVs for longer. Yet another welcome adjustment that was commonly panned following the Odyssey expansion. These suits have always felt underpowered and under-equipped, even within the context of the game's own lore. No word on base oxygen and power buffs yet, these two issues are of significant note and will eventually need attention if the game ever wants to expand on the combined arms promise it once claimed to pursue. Building on the Counter-Strike systems implemented in past updates, players who contribute to the Thargoid War will receive material rewards when the systems they assist are recaptured by human forces. All Grade 4 and Grade 5 materials are included in the reward pool, with the size of reward governed by the percentage rank of players who contribute to the system. These will be primarily from combat bonds, since missions will generate their own rewards. The counters for these rewards do not start until the Type 8 update is released. Unfortunately, Scrapping mechanics were not included with this update, and there isn't any word on whether they will be included in the future. It's clear most of the dev time went into the Type 8 itself, and much of the rest was dedicated to the systems that will distribute material rewards going forward. The silver lining here is that scrapping mechanics are made less necessary by the general reduction in grind that these changes will have going forward. I still find a scrapping system preferable to throwing away all the effort associated with each engineered module, but at least there is a consolation prize in that the next module I make will take less time to compile. The overall balance of the engineering blueprints themselves are not addressed at all in this update, so the most overpowered and overbalanced stuff on offer will only get easier to acquire over the next month, which is good news for haulers and explorers, as their ships will get harder to destroy with less effort. It remains bad news for combat balance, as ship speeds are likely to remain far too high for a good brawl, and most PvP combat will remain very joust-focused. This update does a good job resolving some of the more significant pain points that players have been suffering from over the last few years. Combining this rebalance with a new ship is likely to draw in new players for the hull, and retain them for the engineering, though I don't expect player population counts to break any records. Overall, these changes represent a continuing net improvement to the game that seems to be accelerating. There are a lot of opportunities to improve Elite Dangerous through similar low-effort, high-return adjustments to the game. When paired with major refactors like PowerPlay 2.0 and the continuing promise of new ships, I see a lot of potential for the game to grow, even in the increasingly competitive space sim genre that it occupies. If you've made it this far, remember to like and subscribe. You can join the channel by placing a dollar in the tip jar. Comments are always welcome. That's all I have for today. 
Catch you all later.